Hello, Oilers fans. Austin here, and welcome to the pregame report for Game 6 between the Edmonton Oilers and the Dallas Stars. With a win tonight, the Edmonton Oilers will move on and face the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup Final. It would be the first time that the Oilers have made the Stanley Cup Final since 2006. That was 18 years ago. I was 12 years old. I am now 30. Um, so, obviously, there's, there's a lot of excitement in the air. I'm sure the atmosphere at Rogers Place tonight is going to be absurd. I'm, pre I'm predicting a a decibel level of 110, 115, maybe even 120. If anyone can tell me what Rexall place used to get to in the 06 postseason, I remember, now I don't know what the actual number was, but I remember uh, when the team came out on the ice once, Don Cherry and Ron McLean were standing out on the ice. I can't remember if it was against the Sharks or the Ducks. And I think Don Cherry was holding like a decibel reader in his hand and he like held it up to the fans to show them how loud they were. I can't remember what that hit. Did that hit 120 decibels? I can't remember Someone will be able to let me know. I know the, the you know, Rogers place, it gets loud. Rexall place, just maybe it was the way the broadcasts were. It just always seemed to be on another level, like absolutely deafening. I'm sure Rogers place tonight will be deafening. And the Oilers, they have two opportunities to move on to the cup finals. We saw what happened last series, though. Vancouver had a 3-2 series lead against the Oilers. The Oilers were able to win two straight to knock Vancouver out and move on to the Western Conference final. If you're the Edmonton Oilers, you don't really want to give the Dallas Stars any life. If Dallas wins tonight, and Dallas is a very good road team, um, you know, their chances of winning at home are very high. And, it, you know, if the, if the Oilers have truly gotten to this point where they are a cup contender, they have matured, they've learned how to win these ugly, boring, defensive-style games, um, this is the opportunity to show it. This is the opportunity as a team to band together, work together, play structured, play a great and and you have to play a better 60 minutes than even the night before in Dallas even though the Oilers had a great game five and one three one the Oilers do have to actually play better than that because Dallas backs are against the walls there are players on that team they've been here before they understand what the pressure's like and the pressure, in my opinion, the pressure right now is on the Edmonton Oilers. They're at home. So there's already a bit of pressure there with those loud fans. So Edmonton, if they're able to jump on Dallas early, get an early lead, get comfortable, assert themselves, assert their game plan. Uh, I like Edmonton's chances tonight, but the Dallas Stars are going to have a lot to say about this. There's some players on Dallas that are a little bit quiet in this series. And I'm talking about the veterans, Pavelski, Ben, Sagan. Now Sagan, he had uh, a couple goals in that overtime loss in game one. But a lot of their, you know, older, more grizzled veteran type players, they haven't really made a huge offensive impact in this series. And if you're the Edmonton Oilers, you know some players on Dallas are going to be due. They still have game breakers in Wyatt Johnston, Logan Stankoven, uh, Rupe Hints. Dallas, they are a deep team. They are a skilled team. They are not going to go down without a fight here. Now, friendly reminder, I am going to be live streaming the game tonight. So before I get into the projected lineup and the pregame numbers, just make sure you hit that like button on today's video. And uh, of course, subscribe. If you're not yet subscribed, hit the bell so that you're notified when I do go live. I will be live tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain. I will be doing live stream commentary. I'm going to interact with the chat. I have my cat cam ready to go. Hopefully one of our cats or one of my cats is able to actually hang out this time. Time. They've been very shy since I set up that webcam for them. But uh, you know what? Let's jump into the projected lineup here. A lot of work to do for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, uh, when we look at the projected lineup, now, as of this recording, I don't actually know if there will be any changes. However, I do project that either uh, if Sam Carrick is out, Derek Ryan will go in, but that might be the only change this made that is made. It's usually the fourth line uh, center role between Ryan and Carrick. Those seem to be the guys that will come in and out. I also don't know if Corey Perry will remain on that second line just because he was a little banged up in game five. Uh, obviously, if he's healthy, you know, good enough to go, he'll play again. So top line, of course, we're going to have Nugent Hopkins with McDavid and Hyman. We're going to have Ryan McLeod with Dreisaitl and Perry, Evander Kane with Adam Henrique and Dylan Holloway, who, by the way, I didn't mention it in my day after discussion, but Dylan Holloway had an incredible shot block late in the third period. The way he slid across uh, the ice uh, took the shot away from the point. It might have been Haskinen. I can't remember who took the shot for Dallas, but I do remember Holloway. He got that left leg out. He looked like a goaltender, so uh, worst comes to worst for Skinner. You can always stick Holloway in the net, right? 
just kidding. Uh, I do expect Skinner to play well. Skinner looks like he's finding a bit of a groove. He's been looking more confident. Uh, fourth line, we're going to have Yanmark with Carrick and Brown, or it'll be Yanmark with Ryan and Brown. And then, of course, the extra forwards are Gagne and Fogel. Now, on defense, again, I don't expect any changes here. Ekholm with Bouchard, it's been working. Nurse with Kulak, that's been working. Broberg and CeCe has been working. Now, the advanced metrics for Broberg and CeCe, they haven't been pretty. However, I really like Broberg's game. His ability to skate himself out of trouble, his ability to get that first pass up when he needs to. Uh, in game five, his first shift, he bobbled a couple of pucks, and I think it was Tony Brar posted on X.com or Twitter. And he said uh, when he went to the bench after that first shift where it looked like he was bobbling some pucks, maybe looked a little nervous, uh, Paul Coffey grabbed him by the shoulders, whispered something in his ear, gave him a pat on the back, and Broberg ended up having a great game. He ended up scoring that pivotal third goal uh, for Edmonton in the second period, and you love to see that. Philip Broberg, I'm expecting him to continue to play well back on home ice. Uh, this would be his third game of the postseason, his second at home, and I liked his first game. I liked his second game. Let's see if he can continue to, continue to build on this. Him and CC, of course, anytime CC's out there, I'm always a little, a little butt clenchy. But uh, you know what? The, the, as a team, especially defensively, those six defensemen, um, they have been making life a little bit easier for Stuart Skinner recently. Now they're still giving up a couple high danger looks. Uh, the third period in Game Five, Dallas got some really good looks, but Stuart Skinner was strong. Now for Stuart Skinner, the big thing is making the early saves. Cannot let anything in early, especially the first ten minutes of that first period. That is pivotal because the Oilers, the energy of the crowd. You want to keep building off that. You want to feed off that. Edmonton, you have to be the one that gets the first goal. I know in game four, um, Dallas got up to that 2 nothing lead. Edmonton came back. You can't play with fire like that against Dallas. Uh, you know, if, if Dallas were to get another 2 nothing lead, coming back this, a second time, very, very difficult. So Edmonton, huge key to this game. Get that first goal. Keep the crowd into it. And Stuart Skinner, make the early saves. Give confidence to the players in front of you to get the job done. Now, in saying all that, let's go to the pregame numbers and, of course, my player to watch and game prediction. The Edmonton Oilers, they are now 11-6 in the postseason. Their expected goals for in all situations rank second at 55.61%. Power play, they scored a couple goals in Game 5, which was great to see. If they get any power play opportunities tonight, they've got to capitalize. They've got to make Dallas pay. It's at 34.7%, which continues to rank second best in the entire playoffs. Their penalty kill remains perfect in the Western Conference Final against the Dallas Stars, and they have killed 25 straight penalties. Uh, now, obviously, at some point, they're going to give up a power play goal. I hope it's not tonight. But obviously, you know, as much as their power play was due to score in this series, so was Dallas. Dallas has good players. They have a good power play. Edmonton's penalty kill has been very strong. Every single unit that goes out there, they know what their job is, and they they, they perform it to a T. Um, so the penalty kill, keep that going strong. Don't let that power play for Dallas give them any life. Edmonton's penalty kills at 93.5% in the postseason. They scored 3.59 goals per game. That ranks second best in the, in the entire playoffs. They give up 2.71 goals per game, which ranks eighth. Their team save percentage in all situations is now 88.94%, which ranks 10th. And their team shooting percentage is 11.94%, which ranks third best. Obviously, the Oilers, you want to get lots of shots on Ottinger, but you also want to make sure that you're capitalizing on the shots that you're taking as well. For the Dallas Stars, they are now 10-8 and eight in the postseason. And uh, on the road, now, I actually have their stats here. Their road record is incredible. The Dallas Stars are 6-2 and two on the road, and they also have the best expected goals for percentage on the road. Uh, but right now, you know, in all situations in the entire postseason, it's at 54.41%, which ranks fourth. Power play is 21.4%, which ranks eighth. Their penalty kill has dropped down to 11th at 71.4%. They score 2.83 goals per game, which ranks seventh. They uh, only give up 2.56 goals per game, which ranks fifth. Their team save percentage in all situations is 90.98%, which ranks fourth. And their team shooting percentage has dropped a little bit to 10.26%. That ranks seventh best in the entire postseason. Now, the Oilers clearly have, and as the series has progressed, they've gotten an extra edge in a couple categories here. Um, so, you know, when, when we look at the actual, you know, just the raw data and the advanced data, 
Um, you know, Edmonton, as, as good as a, as a road team as Dallas is, the Oilers have the second best expected goals for percentage at home at 60.89% in all situations. Uh, the Oilers, they, they've scored 34 goals and given up 26 at home. And then the Dallas Stars, they've scored 25 goals and only given up 17 on the road. Obviously, Dallas Stars, we know how tough they are as a road team. The Edmonton Oilers just embrace this moment. They've got to embrace this moment. Let's see what they can do. My player to watch tonight is Connor McDavid. If the Oilers are going to make the Stanley Cup final, Connor McDavid, the captain, the leader, the point leader in the playoffs, uh, the driving force of this team, the heartbeat of this team, um, this is his opportunity as captain, lead his team to the Stanley Cup final for the first time since 2006. Lead his team. This organization, like this version of the Empton Oilers, the 2023-24 Oilers, Connor McDavid has an opportunity to build a legacy here. This is part of the legacy. This is part of the growth. This is part of the mat maturation process. Connor McDavid is my player to watch. If the Oilers win, expect him to have a massive, massive game. And of course, what is my game prediction? Will the Oilers win or lose? Do I stick to this game seven prediction and say Dallas wins tonight? Or do I say the Oilers are going to win and close this thing out in six and go against my own um, series, go against my own series prediction video? Well, you know what? I'm going to go against the series prediction video. I'm going to say the Oilers are going to lock this thing down. They are going to finish the Dallas Stars off in six games. I'm predicting an Oilers win on home ice, and um, I really hope we get to see that. I cannot wait for the game tonight. I'm just buzzing. My heart rate is, uh, hold on, let's take a look. It's at 102 beats right now per minute, according to my Fitbit, so... It's it's an exciting time in oil country. Don't want to get too excited just yet because there's I like I mentioned, trying to temper expectations, keep myself calm here. There's a lot of work to be done. But if you enjoyed today's pregame report, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know your game day thoughts in the comment section below. I want to hear from all of you. I want to hear from Stars fans, Oilers fans, and any other fan. If you're if you're tuning in and you're a neutral fan or maybe even the Panthers looking forward to see how this series plays out, I want to know your thoughts in the comment section as well. And like I said, I will be live streaming tonight. So before the game tonight, tell someone that you love them, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the absolute world to me. We'll see you tonight for the live stream. Let's go Oilers.